friends, what's happening? Welcome back to the library for story time. I hope you all had an amazing time out and about in Cumberland County doing all those incredible things that we did, meeting those amazing people and learning all about that really interesting stuff. I just wanna say a big shout out and thanks to everybody who allowed us into their spots during COVID time. <sighs> I had so much fun, I hope you did too. So we're gonna be doing in-house story times here at Bridgeton Library for a while until the weather gets a little nicer, until COVID calms down a little bit, and then we're gonna be going back out on the road doing on-the-road story times for you. So today we're gonna to be reading a few stories about dinosaurs. And we're gonna be doing a really fun dinosaur craft too, so stay tuned for that. This is Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs by Mo Willems. He's an awesome writer. I'm sure you're familiar with his work. Like all, all the books that he writes about, you know, being in a book. He's just such an awesome writer. So Mo has dedicated this book to nobody. So me, he's dedicated this book to me. And it's called Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs by Mo Willems. He's such a funny guy. Here we go, you ready? And the story begins with, once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs, Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. You see, it's got a little Norwegian flag. On his, on his suitcase, and the sign says, home sweet dinosaur home. <laughs> on this calendar it says, Norway, the gateway to Sweden. <laughs> I wonder how Norwegians feel about that. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, position, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Dinosaur from Norway, mama dinosaur, papa dinosaur. Some of them have ice cubes in them to regulate the temperature, and this one has a thermometer in it. Oh boy, said papa dinosaur in his loud booming voice. It's finally time to leave and go to the, uh, somewhere else. <laughs> yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unlocked home while we are, uh, someplace else. Har, har, horfchik, hoogrik. Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. No, they weren't doing that. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Poorly supervised. Just then, the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur! The trap is not yet sprung! But that could have been a rock falling or a squirrel. <laughs> and the little sign here says, two miles to trap. And the word trap is crossed out and the words very nice house is written in. <laughs> and this one says getting closer. Why did they want to trap a poor unsuspecting child? Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. 
For example, she never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. And the welcome mat says, welcome, tee. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, she said. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If I can only get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. Hum, 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 hum. Boy, that looked like a long trip she had to do. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but she ate it anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about the temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. <laughs> See, she's face planted into the bowl of colder chocolate pudding. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right. But Goldilocks was on such a roll bite now, she hardly noticed. She's basically in the bowl, just eating. She has become one with the chocolate pudding. It is a chocolate pudding hot tub. Soon Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate filled little girl bonbons, which by the way, are not, are totally not the favorite thing of the whole world for the hungry dinosaurs. No. So she was tired. She was groggy. Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. But the third chair. What do you think the third chair was? Dun, dun, dun. Was too tall. Yes, that's right. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What's going on around here, groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. Bears. I'm not gonna tell her. Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Did you see them peering into the window? Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. I'm sorry, but this, <laughs> this poster says, go asteroids, feel the boom. <laughs> so the asteroids are apparently a sports team, but it's a joke because you know how apparently an asteroid hit the earth and killed all the dinosaurs. It's very funny. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran out the back door and got out of there. And the mat says, wipe your talons. I love Mo Willems. I love him. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, now, or charge, or the Norwegian expression for chewy bun bun time, <laughs> or the chewy bun bun time, yeah. Suddenly and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door, but they were too late. Goldilocks left 
There is an amazingly hilarious picture here showing a picture of a dinosaur in a hard hat, and it says, we are natural gas. <laughs> look it up. And there's a, also a dinosaur lamp, and then look, it's Pigeon from Mo Willem's other books. He's the best, dude. He's just the best. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. And three empty bowls of chocolate pudding. And that was it. And the moral to the story is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. Look, there's the bears. She's like, the bears, I found you. And you're not dinosaurs. Oh, there's more. But wait, there's more. And the moral for the dinosaurs is, lock the back door. <laughs> they look very disappointed. Very disappointed indeed. They, they didn't have a scrumptious, chocolate-filled bonbon little girl. Wasn't that a great book? Woo! I'm going to give that book a nine and a half because it made me laugh so hard. And our other dinosaur book today is... Edwina, the dinosaur who didn't know that she was extinct. It's another Mo Willems book. Yes, that's right. Oh, I can't wait for this one. Words and pictures by Mo Willems. Uh, this one does have a dedication. It says to share, comma, nice save. I don't know what that means. Everyone in town knew Edwina. She was the dinosaur who played with the neighborhood kids. She was the dinosaur who did favors for anyone who asked. What a cool dinosaur she is. Don't you just love her handbag and her, her talons painted pink? Very fancy. All right, Edwina. Edwina helped the little old ladies cross the street, and she baked chocolate chip cookies for everyone. Everybody loved Edwina. Ooh, I almost lost the book. Except Reginald Van Hoobie Doobie. <laughs> yes, that is a guy's name. There he is. That grumpy looking kid right there. Reginald Von Hoobie Doobie. I wonder why he didn't like Edwina. What do you think? Reginald knew just about everything about just about everything. He liked to give reports class all about all the things he knew. Today he was going to talk about things that are extinct. Specifically, dinosaurs. Do you see he is, his sign that he put on the blackboard? It says, dinosaurs, totally extinct. A report by Reginald Van Hoobie Doobie. And all the kids are just like, okay. But as soon as Reginald started, Beth McFeeder said, what about Edwina? She's a dinosaur. Then Tommy Britcher said, yeah, Edwina can't be extinct. She bakes chocolate chip cookies for us. And then Ms. Mink added, maybe Edwina is baking chocolate chip cookies right now. And Reginald went, oh. Before he knew it, everyone except Reginald was outside eating cookies. Having a cookie party. Except for this little grumpy dude. No one listens to me with that dinosaur around, thought Reginald. Comes up, he brushes his teeth, he goes to bed. Well, tomorrow I'll prove to the whole world that dinosaurs really are extinct. And poof, Edwina will disappear. He really has to get a life. The next morning, Reginald handle, handed, excuse me. The next morning, Reginald handed out flyers that made excellent arguments about how extinct dinosaurs are. See all the stuff he wrote about that? They also made excellent hats. 
and paper airplanes. Thanks, Reginald. Even the dog had a hat. When the flyers didn't work, Reginald tried protesting. This is not happening. <laughs> that dinosaur is not standing there eating an ice cream cone. When protesting didn't work, he tried everything he could think of. He had a one-man band. He banged a gong. He tap danced with jazz hands, probably. Do you think any of that worked? But no one listened. He was alone, standing by himself. Finally, Reginald broke down and cried, Boo-hoo, he sobbed. Why won't anyone listen to me? I'll listen to you, said a voice from behind him. I bet I can guess who it was. Yes, it was Edwina. <laughs> She's so sweet. Even though he's trying to get rid of her, trying to make her disappear, trying to wish her into non-existence, she was still there for him. Reginald took Edwina to his classroom. She was a very sweet dinosaur. If I could turn the page. There we go. Inside, Edwina listened as Reginald told her the truth about dinosaurs. He was persuasive. He was expressive. He was loud. He was very convincing. See, he's pretending to be dead. Edwina was shocked. Shocked. When he was done, Reginald felt fantastic. No one had ever listened to him so well for so long. Everything Reginald had said made sense. There was no doubt about it in Edwina's mind. She knew she was extinct. Poor Edwina. She's such a sweet dinosaur, too. I don't want her to be extinct. So she busted out of the side of the wall and she left that impression. She just didn't care. She's just going to go outside and dance around. She must not have felt extinct. And by then, neither did Reginald von Hooby Dooby. <laughs> He just jumped right through, and he's dancing around in the garden also. What do you think about that? Oh, I didn't get the last page. I'm sorry. Almost there. Almost there. My fingers are not working. There we go. Look at this. Between his baking, Reginald Von Hooby Dooby some cookies. Isn't that sweet? Look, he has a little napkin and a glass of milk. He's all ready. Yay! Woo! I'm going to give that one an eight. Yay! All right, kids, stay tuned for craft. It's coming right up. We're making a cool dinosaur. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Crafting with Miss Adaria's Hands. <laughs> What are we doing today? Well, did you enjoy those wonderful stories by Mo Willems? Isn't he wonderful? What a great writer. We're gonna do a craft. We're gonna make a dinosaur. What? You see these shapes that I have here? Get that glue out of the way. I painted them so that they would be nice and dry. I just used some tempera paint and then uh, I had this guideline of, uh, it is a diplodocus, but it's kind of the same shape as one of those plant eaters, like a brontosaurus. So what I'm going to do, and we're going to use this paper plate as his or her body. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to see if this color green matches. It's a little bit darker. Let's see what this one is like oh yeah that's a good one so I'm gonna draw a line here make it just a little bit round right and then I'm gonna turn this over so I don't get 
Sharpie marks all over it. And I'm just going to go in and color this body so that it is the same as what I painted. And it's not going to look that exciting, but... The smell of Sharpie, I tell you. But it's going to be our dinosaur bod. Okay. It probably would have been better with paint, but then it would have taken probably about like a half hour or an hour to dry, and we just don't have time today. <laughs> no time, no time. Like the rabbit in Alice in Wonderland. That's right. Just didn't have any time. He had to rush around and get to the next thing. And I don't like living like that, but hey, some people like to be in a rush. Okay. We're almost done with this, and then we're going to put the dinosaur together after I cut out the other parts of her body. Did you think of a good name for our dinosaur yet? What about Matilda? Isn't that a good name? Do you remember the story we read about Edwina? And how Reginald Von Hooby Dooby? wanted to prove that she was extinct because he believed that all dinosaurs are extinct. Well, she proved him wrong, didn't she? And she rewarded him with kindness and friendship and a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies. That's how all friendships should be sealed with a fresh batch of chocolate chip cookies, don't you think? <laughs> People would get along much better if they baked each other cookies. So here is our dinosaur body. We're going to let that dry from the Sharpie just for a minute while we cut out our shapes. I'm just going to go over here and grab his legs, her legs. Okay, let's officially make this dinosaur a girl. Matilda, Matilda, Matilda the green dip. Blodocus. That's an interesting name for a dinosaur. Let's cut out Matilda's tail. Whoa, this is going to be a long, 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 long tail. I wonder why they had such long tails. My thinking is that it helped to balance their bodies, because if they had such long, long, long necks, their bodies might not have been able to hold them up and they probably would have just fallen over from the weight of their necks. And then how would they be able to move and eat and walk around? So maybe the tail gave them some balance. And also it could probably be used in case a bigger meat-eating dinosaur was trying to have them for lunch. They probably could use it to swipe at somebody like please no don't eat me and the tail would whip around and knock into somebody who was trying to hurt them and the tail was very useful for these dinosaurs gosh wouldn't you have loved to have been alive in dinosaur time oh man or wouldn't you love to have been a dinosaur that would be nice Okay, we're cutting out Matilda's head. All right, and down her neck. Look how cool this dinosaur is gonna be. There she is, there's her head and neck, and there's her tail. And now we're gonna cut out her feet. 
big old dinosaur feet. Now, I know you only see two of them, and she definitely has four of them, but the way we're gonna make this body is gonna be in profile, so you're only gonna be able to see half of her body. It's like if you stand in front of a mirror and turn sideways, you really can only see one of your legs and one of your arms. So that's what that means. And well, there you go. So here's one of her legs and here's the other leg. Almost done. Round that off a little bit. Have you ever been to a museum and seen dinosaur bones? Wow, I love that. You know what's a really good museum up in New York City? It's called the American Museum of Natural History. They have a lot of dinosaur bones there. They have a they have a Tyrannosaurus Rex. They have a Brontosaurus, which is kind of like Matilda. Okay, so here's her body. And also there's a museum in Philadelphia that has uh, dinosaur bones, right? I haven't been there since I was a kid. So how we're going to do this is because um, the glue is going to take too long, but normally I would use some glue and put the legs on and the head and the tail. See how she's going to look? Isn't that cool? Wow. Or should it be like this? And this should be the top of her body. I'm not sure. You could do either way. What looks better? I don't know. I think I like the other way better. So we're going to use tape just to get these on quickly so you could see what it looks like. But normally I would be using glue. But I have to stand here for a while and hold that and... I don't want to make you wait to see this wonderful dinosaur put together. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape on the back of these legs. Put the legs right there. And my Don, my Don dolls are supervising this operation today. But they couldn't see because they were laying down. So what's up with that? Okay, girls, what do you think? I think you're doing a fabulous job with that dinosaur. I think if that dinosaur was alive, we could probably go for a ride. Yeah, I think Matilda would let you take a ride. Definitely. She seems like a really nice dinosaur. I don't know if she would bake cookies for us, but she definitely would let us go for a ride if you asked her very nicely and were very calm and polite and didn't hurt her body. Yes. Okay. So here we got Matilda, and I think what Matilda needs is she needs some way to see, don't you think? So, oh, you know what? Just give me one second. I have, I have an eye for Matilda. I think it's going to be pretty funny. I have a little tiny eye for her. So, and it, it's um. It's the, the uh, static is making it stick to my finger. So my thumb had an eye there for a minute. And I think, I thought maybe you could peel it off and it would be sticky, but I think um, a little dot of glue will go for Matilda's eye here. Come on, come on, dot of glue. Hey, I had this all working. What's going on? It just doesn't want to cooperate. I know, maybe there's a little bit of glue stuck up at the top. That could be it. Come on, glue. Yay. Oh, I used a little bit too much. So I'm going to take a tiny little bit of that glue off because I think that would be too much for the little eyeball. Okay, that looks like that's about right. Oh, what's going on here? <laughs> My fingers are not cooperating. I want glue to be right there. 
Okay, good. And here is Matilda's eye. <gasps> Look at that cute little eye. Isn't that funny? And you know what we could do with the darker Sharpie? We can make a little nose and a big smile. Because you know she is one happy dinosaur. We'll save that eye for another project. So what do you think of Matilda? Yay, we love her, isn't she great? And look, here's, here's a, this is supposed to be an alligator or a crocodile, I think it's an alligator, but they definitely descended from dinosaurs. <laughs> so what do you think? Oh, Matilda, you're lovely, oh, thank you. Oh, shall we go off into the swamp together somewhere and have some fun and get some food? Oh, that sounds great. What do you think, Dawn Dolls? Matilda, you're so great. All right, kids, thank you so much. I hope you had fun. And uh, please stay tuned for story time next time and our fun craft. And we'll have some surprise guests along the way for our in-house story times. And so until then, have a wonderful day. You take care. Stay safe. <laughs>